Based on a novella written in 1928 by Yuri Tinyanov, Lieutenant Kijay tells the story of a non-existent Russian military officer created when a board clerk accidentally makes a spelling error while copying the orders of the day. Fearful of the unpredictable wrath of Tsar Paul I, the military officials agree to proceed as if Kijay is real. When Kijay's name catches the Tsar's eye, the ruse becomes more elaborate than any of the participants could have foreseen, resulting in a fictional romance, a groomless wedding, and eventually a funeral. Much like any other biographical story, the film begins with Kijay's proverbial birth and progresses onto his fake death. Shortly after the film's release in 1934, Promoter Boris Guzman would convince Prokofiev to adapt the film score into a suite for orchestra, combining five progressive movements in the style of a musical biography for the ethereal character of Lieutenant Kijay. Unfortunately for us, Prokofiev scrapped much of the background percussion parts present in the film score when composing the suite. One part that did remain, though in a much more refined version, was the stately military march that accompanied the piccolo solo at the beginning of The Birth of Kijay. Interesting to note is that the drumming that you're hearing in the opening scene of the film, that which would eventually become the famed excerpt from the suite, is actually a series of loosely written exercises that Prokofiev had his percussionist play in order to test the sound equipment at Belgiskino Studios, where the score was being recorded. Pressed for time, as composers for film most often were in those days, Prokofiev ended up using those audio tests in the final score. Today, the Lieutenant Key J excerpt is one of the most commonly asked excerpts for snare drum in professional orchestra auditions. The reason for this and why it is such a great excerpt to study is because it requires a high level of control and consistency in order to navigate the complex rhythmic placement at a very soft pianissimo level. Over the years, auditionees have used smaller drums to assist with soft playing. At an audition, you'll almost always see candidates with a drum like this in addition to their standard concert drum. A 12x3 drum like this one will allow you to play very, very softly while still maintaining control. The interesting thing about this is that you would never actually play this section that softly in a performance. In fact, in many of the most famous recordings of the suite, you'll hear a full-size 5.5 or 6.5 concert drum, or even a traditional marching snare like this one. In a concert hall, this drum would barely be heard over top of the piccolo solo. But in our modern audition culture, the high level of competition has morphed this passage into something almost totally different than what it was originally intended to be. In the score for the suite, Prokofiev notated the Italian phrase tamboro militare, or military drum. There's some debate over whether this is a stylistic notation, as in play in a military style, or whether Prokofiev wanted the player to use an actual military or field drum. Most authorities in orchestral music seem to agree that the answer is probably both. In most performances, a large drum is still used and the part is played in a rougher military style. So what if you don't own a piccolo drum or a field drum? The good news is, there are ways to replicate both on a standard sized drum. If you find yourself needing to play this excerpt in an audition setting and want to minimize stick to head contact noise and maximize snare response, the best thing to do is cut a circle out of cotton cloth or even an old t-shirt and cover the head almost entirely with it. Make sure to play directly on top of the cloth for maximum effect. Another cool trick is to cut out a flat part of an old head and lay that over top of your drum. This gives your concert drum a nice deep growl, similar to a rope drum or traditional marching snare drum. Let's hear the difference between all three. If you're learning this excerpt for the first time, I have two tips for you. The first is to find a solid recording to reference. The one you heard in today's episode is Eugene Ormandy and the Philadelphia Orchestra from 1964. 
The second tip is to not learn this at a pianissimo dynamic at first. Instead, practice slowly at a mezzo piano to mezzo forte dynamic so you can really work out the clarity of all the tricky ornamentation and phrasing because that is where the character of this music really comes to life. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, we're hoping to make Behind the Excerpt a weekly thing. Um, be sure to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments if there's anything that you want us to do in particular, um, any excerpts you want us to talk about in more detail, um, maybe even if you want us to do a, a more detailed lesson on um, anything you heard today too, just be sure to let us know in the comments and uh, share this video with your friends, all that good stuff. And remember that greatness comes from small beginnings. We'll see you next time.